What do Cheerios and Cosmic Rays have in common? Otto wins them. And that's who we're talking about today on Vintage Space. Otto Winsen was a German-born aeronautical engineer who immigrated to the United States in 1937 when he was 20 years old. He earned his degree in aeronautical engineering from the University of Detroit Mercy, but then spent most of the Second World War in an internment camp. Once the war was over, Winsen returned to the world of engineering. He was hired as the chief engineer of the Minnesota Tool and Manufacturing Corporation based in Minneapolis. There, he was developing instruments that Navy dive bombers would use when he was contacted by Jean-Félix Picard. Picard was another engineer who had done a number of balloon flights, most notably Pleiades 1, in which he had risen to 11,000 feet under a cluster of 92 balloons. Picard was working on the follow-up program, Pleiades 2, but was having trouble with the balloons. Cellophane balloons, which he'd used before, had effectively reached their technological limits, and the payload for Pleiades 2 was too heavy that he needed something stronger. That's why he recruited Winsen to help. Together, the two engineers looked at saran, nylon, and even pyofilm balloons before figuring out that polyethylene was the best possible material to use. This whisper-thin but extremely strong plastic could be used to make balloons that would expand as the gas inside them expanded as it was exposed to unfiltered sunlight rising through the atmosphere. It was strong enough to hold a much heavier payload. In 1946, Pleiades II was renamed Project Helios, and the contract to build the balloon was awarded to General Mills. This company, best known for making breakfast cereals, had actually started its own aeronautical research division that same year, and had poached Winsen to become its chief engineer. Working for General Mills, Winsen developed these polyethylene balloons and built some that could hold as much as 200,000 cubic feet of gas, but it still wasn't enough for Project Helios. The gondola developed into a 7-foot, 2-inch sphere, and it was just far too heavy. It would need up to 70 of Winsen's giant balloons to get off the ground. The Helios project was ultimately cancelled in 1947, but the research fed into two follow-up programs. One was Project Skyhook, a classified program that used balloons to raise instruments to high altitudes to see whether or not enemy nations were testing nuclear bombs. Another was Project Stratolab. This was a joint project between the Navy's Office of Naval Research and the National Science Foundation designed to get two men up to 100,000 feet suspended under a balloon. In 1949, Winsen left General Mills and founded his own company, Winsen Research, and this is probably much more familiar to some of you. It was Winsen Research that ultimately won the contract to build the balloons for the U.S. Air Force's Man High program in the late 1950s. Project Man High was designed to gather data on the effects of near-space exposure on the human body in anticipation of spaceflight, and it is a story that I get into in my book Breaking the Chains of Gravity, which is out now in the UK and coming out in the US on January 12th. Winsen found a fair bit of success in the 1950s and 1960s, but it didn't last. He eventually moved the company from Minneapolis to Texas and sold off pieces to his employees. He got a divorce from his first wife, Vera, and was very unhappy in his second marriage. And he began to lose his clout in the field. He eventually fell into a deep depression and sadly committed suicide in 1976. Do you guys have other questions about ballooning or balloon-based programs, specifically those that anticipated spaceflight or eventually fed into NASA programs? Leave those in the comment section below, as well as anything else you'd like to know more about, although I will say my to-do list has gotten very long. Be sure to follow me on Twitter for daily Vintage Space content, and with a new video going up every week, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode.